this is the exercise push up at a bench or a couch. And this exercise is great if you cannot do an ex a push up at on the floor. Um, I recommend doing this with a full straight body, like a plank. So if you want to get really good at a, a regular push up with a long body with knees off the floor, then you need to practice with your knees off the floor, uh, but just at a different angle off of the floor. All right, so I'm going to show you at the couch or a bench. You can use a bench at the gym. <clears throat> All right, you're going to have your hands a little bit wider than shoulder width distance, legs out long. Might be easier with your feet to be a little stepped apart. Might be harder with your feet closer in towards one another. Either way, find a long plank pose, firm belly, firm glutes, and you're not gonna sink your chest towards the floor. You're gonna drive that chest up towards the ceiling. So no sinking here into your shoulders. You're gonna push strong away. Maybe this is where you are and you stay here, or maybe you slowly bend your elbows and bring your whole body closer towards the couch and then push away with great power. Try that again, bend your elbows, lower down, firm belly, firm glutes, push away. Great, one more and push. Good, if that's working for you, keep going, do five more reps. If that's not working for you, you're gonna stay in this tall plank, bend your elbows, slow, slow, slow to lower down on the negative portion. Ooh, then tap the knees down, push your hips back, and then come back up. So we're skipping the push-up part or we're just working the negative slow down portion. All right, try that again. Bend your elbows, slowly lower down. Strong belly, strong glutes. Tap down the knees, hips go back, reset. All right, you're gonna do eight total repetitions, eight total reps of whichever version you're doing. Then you'll take a little rest and then you'll do that again. Eight more reps, take a little rest and then eight more. Okay, it should take you about, I don't know, five minutes total. Spread the fingers apart. Try and evenly distribute the weight into the palms and the wrists. Throughout the movement, you're letting your shoulder blades glide in and out on the back ribs. You're letting them move a little bit. They need to move. Right, so as I'm lowering down, my shoulder blades are coming in towards each other, like they're holding that pencil in between. As I'm lowering down, they're gliding in towards each other on my back. As I'm pushing up through the push-up, my shoulder blades are spreading apart. Okay. Have fun. Tag me on social media if you do some, uh, we'll call these inclined couch push-ups. Tag me, let me know how it goes. Get strong. <laughs> All right, this is push-ups at the wall. This is like level one, yeah? Meet yourself where you are. Hands on the wall, elbows straight. You're driving your chest away from the wall. Good, spread the fingers out. Long, strong body, firm, engaged through the core, the belly, and the glutes. Here we go, bend your elbows. You bring your head closer, well, your body, your whole body, but you bring your head between your hands and then push away. Elbows straight. Elbows bend and press. I'm on my tiptoes or the balls of my feet. Good. You're going to do this on repeat until you get to about 10. Then you'll take a little rest and you'll do 10 more. Take a little rest. Do 10 more. As I'm pushing away, I'm driving my chest. Um, I'm sliding the shoulder blades back. It's like I'm trying to glide my shoulder blades apart. As I'm el elbow bending, coming closer towards the wall, my shoulder blades are creeping towards one another like I want to hold that pencil. Okay, 
This is level one, push-ups at the wall. Once you get good at this, you'll come down level two, hands on a bench or a couch. Once you get good there, you'll bring it down to the floor or a lower bench or a lower couch. Uh, but start where you're at. If you're at the wall, great, celebrate that. Get super good at that, and then you'll move on to the next one. All right? Go get some. Push-ups on the floor. Hands come wider than the shoulders. Lift your knees off the floor. Get strong from your heels through the back, glutes, back of the head. And imagine there's that candle flame um, underneath your chest. There's a candle between your hands. You're going to rise your uh, rib cage, move it away from the candle flame. Good. Breathe in. Breathe out. Strong belly. On your next inhale, bend your elbows, making like a Y shape with the elbows and the torso. And then exhale. Push away. Strong body, working to control the torso from the head down to the heels. Great. If you can't do this on the floor, where do you go? You do it at a couch or bench. Can't do it at a couch or bench? Do it at the wall. Meet yourself where you are. Oh, then get strong, y'all. This is great if you have um, shoulder injuries, if you work with your arms, if you're a painter, if you're an athlete, if you're a mother or a parent and you're lifting your toddler up into the, the sky as you play a game, you're gonna want some strength through the front side of your chest, front side of your arms. And if you are a, a human with the X chromosomes, then don't worry about getting bulky. Um, I want you to focus on getting the skill of push-ups down. They are a super basic human skill that we need, not only for your everyday life stuff, but also as we age, our balance changes, and sometimes we need assistance getting off the floor. So you're gonna wanna be able, in your future, or your now, you're gonna wanna be able to push yourself off the floor to come to stand up. Yeah, and you're gonna probably use your hands to help you to do that. So I want you to get strong in a push-up so that you can live a long, full, healthy life and stay as independent for as long as possible. This is bench press at home without a bench. I rolled up a big ass blanket. I'm gonna use it on my spine so I can get a little bit more space for my elbows to come back behind my chest. You don't have to use this. You can just use the floor. I'll show you that as well, both versions. Okay, I'm gonna use some heavy weights. Uh, find a weight that's heavy for you. I'm gonna use some dumbbells. I'm gonna put my booty on the end of this bench, quote unquote. I'm gonna hold that weight in each hand. I'm gonna slowly come down, ugh, controlling the weights and finding a supported position on my back. Good, both my head and my tailbone, my low spine are supported. I'm gonna bring my arms out wide. I'm gonna go at like a 60 degree angle or so. They don't have to be at a 90 degree angle. Um, that's fine. All right, you're gonna hold the weight strong. Take a big deep breath in, feet are planted. As you exhale, drive those weights up towards the ceiling. And then slowly bring them back down. Elbows touch the floor. Oh, breathe in. Exhale. Brace the spine. Oh, wrap the ribs around your spine. Your belly is working. And slowly bring elbows down. Let's do that six more times. Good. Breathe in. Exhale. Push. Punch up. Thinking about squeezing the pecs. Slowly release elbows back down, controlling the weight the entire time. Five more, breathe in, push. Release. And four, go push. Big explosive push on the punch up. Slow control on the release down. Let's go three more, I think my counting's right. Breathe in, exhale. Woo. Inhale, release, exhale, push. 
Inhale, release. Last one, exhale, push. Big, big, big. Good. Slowly release down. To come back up, if your weights are too strong, you're going to bring them in front of the chest and slowly uh, curl up. Or you could bail off to the side. Careful. If the weights are too light, this won't feel like anything. You need to amp up the weights. Invest in some heavier weights. If you only have one, great. Do one heavy set on one arm and then switch sides. Heavy set on your other arm. That's if you only have one heavy hand weight or kettlebell. Um, yeah. You have to increase the weight in order to increase your strength. And the stronger that your joints are, the more you're going to be able to handle and withstand in your everyday life outside of your exercise workout practice. So I highly encourage you to invest in a gym membership or some heavier weights so you have options. Um, and yeah, get stronger, y'all. Here it is without the blanket. I find the blanket is helpful for me because it gives me more a larger range of motion to work at from home. If you have a gym, just use a bench, okay? Use a flat bench or an incline bench. If you're at home and you don't want to use the blanket because it's too unstable for you, feels too weird, great, just use the floor, same thing. You're going to grab onto your heavy weights, one in each hand, feet planted. You're going to curl the spine down. Ugh to come down onto your back. Great. <sighs> Elbows come out. They don't have to go at a 90 degree. I'm going at like a 70 degree angle. Good. Breathe in. <sighs> Exhale, punch up. <sighs> if you want to make this more tricky and you're not ready to invest in a heavier weight but it doesn't feel like you're getting enough of a workout, then you can just hover your elbows off the floor and then push up. And you can also go super duper slow on the release down, hover elbows. That makes the weight feel so much heavier than it is because of gravity. Oh, push up. Good. So this is just flat on the floor. Both are great. Just start. Yeah, our brains can provide a million reasons as to why we should not do something or barriers so that we don't do it, but just I encourage you to create some sort of routine for yourself. Keep realistic with your goals. Reach out to me if you want help or support. I'm here to answer questions, give you guidance, offer recommendations, tips, refer you to somebody else, etc. All right, I'm here. Have fun. All right, here we have a chest press. Similar idea to a, a bench press. It relates to a push-up. It's just a different angle, different work to strengthen your core as well as the shoulders. You're going to take one I like one heavy weight. You could use two medium sized weights, whatever you have. You're going to try it out. Kneeling, knees about hips distance apart, toes tucked or untucked, whatever feels more stable for you. You're going to tuck the tail under a little bit like you're thrusting your hips towards the wall in front of you. Keep them there, thrusting forward. Bring the weight up towards your chest, elbows bent. Take a big breath in. Exhale, punch the weight out in front of you. I often lean back a little bit as I press out just for a little counterbalance. Feels okay, so you might do that too. Inhale, elbows bend, weight to chest. Exhale, press away. Good. Oh, bonus, keep going, bonus. Inhale, press, exhale, press. Woo. Bonus, you're getting some glute work too to stabilize you here. Awesome. Chest press, belly firm, glutes working, hamstrings working. How do you do? Here we go. Breathe in, exhale, press. Inhale, weight to chest, exhale, press. Let's go. Three, four, we're going to eight, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, oop, liar, ten. Good, go rest for 30 seconds. Maybe you'll do another exercise, and then we'll do 10 more. Kneeling, hold the weight in front of the chest. Thrust your hips forward, feel your glutes engage, feel your hamstrings doing something. Breathe. Here we go, we're gonna go to eight. All right, breathe in, exhale, press. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hey, you may have noticed the breathing that I'm doing. I'm doing a, I forget what it's called. There's a name for it, the type of exhale. But I'm basically exhaling through a straw. Sometimes you can do an S. And that's creating some more pressure in my abdomen to create some support for the, for the press. Different angle. If the weight doesn't feel heavy enough, you gotta amp it up. Invest in heavier weights. There is an option for a resistance band on this if you have a resistance band. I don't have one to show you right now, but if you want it, tell me. I'll see if I can, um, I'll, I'll record a video for you. So if you want a resistance band instead of a hand weight for this move, let me know, okay? Breathe in. This is an overhead press. Stand with your feet underneath your hips, one heavy weight in one hand, and do some overhead pressing, trying to bring that elbow straight as you press up, uh, arm trying to come behind the ear, and you're minimizing any movement through the ribs. That's why I've got my free hand resting on my ribs. And you can also think about the feet, uh, trying to, the feet are staying stable, but you're going to attempt to split the earth in, in half with your feet, and that's gonna turn on some muscles through the outer hips, your glute medius. Those are huge stabilizers. So that's gonna keep the rest of your, um, rest of your trunk stable. And of course, switch hands, do the other side, pressing, trying to straighten the elbow, arms trying to come behind the ear. I recommend videotaping yourself and have fun, enjoy.